getting somewhere. We are getting all the lights on. Water and fuel goes off, so does the wait to start. All right. Um, fan comes on all the time, switch isn't working yet. Vacuum lines won't work until the vacuum pump is hooked up. Uh, got a cargo light working, uh, oil light, got four ways turn signals, high beams, no tail lights yet. Um, the brake light and the anti lock light is on mainly because we don't have our master in yet and there's sensors on that. The uh, back axle has to get plugged in for to get a signal for the anti lock, so I'm not too worried about that yet. Um, Radio is working, don't have speakers hooked up yet, but that's uh, last of my concern. And uh, yeah, so we're getting there. The Wiring's getting closer and closer. Uh, I'm gonna do some other stuff, like hook up the brake booster and all that to get those lights off and get the transfer case in so we can move it, turn it around, and put the back axle on to get the anti-lock light off. So, finally some progress again um, after hours and hours of wiring. 1985 was the last year for the crew cabs and the Dodges, and they didn't introduce that again until the late 90s, I believe. Um, and they were only available in the club cab and the regular cab, um, but the four-door option was gone. Uh, part of the reason was that Dodge was never a big seller in the trucks. They were always in tough competition with Ford and GM, and were on the losing end of it. It wasn't until they started putting Cummins in it that they uh, got a decent share of the truck market. The diesels didn't come out until 1989, but the crew cabs were stopped after 1985. So this is gonna be kind of a, a unique uh, one-off truck when we're done. Uh, the wheelbase on this is about 166 inches long, and the overall length of the truck is gonna be about 21 feet long. So it is gonna be kind of a bear to drive, but the Cummins will help a lot with that. Uh, stock on the Cummins is 160 horse with 400 foot-pounds of torque and the five-speed will do a good job of being able to transfer that to uh, the wheels with with uh, with these. Brand new clutch, brand new uh, um, U-joints, drive line, every steering piece is going to be replaced so this truck should be able to uh, be, be able to handle anything that the driver is going to throw at it for a while. Um, the, I was surprised that with the weight of the engine on a uh, Cummins of about 1,200 pounds dress, 1,000 pounds bare, that there was not any, the frame is no different than the 318 that was housed in it, and I imagine that engine wouldn't weigh more than six, 700 pounds. So um, either the frame was over-engineered for the 318, or more than likely under-engineered for the weight of the Cummins. I know that Dodge was not great on their front suspensions. They did do a number on the front ends on these things and they were prone to uh, breaking. The original transmissions also weren't heavy enough for the uh, amount of torque that was produced and they went through a lot of transmissions uh, and in the earlier 90s came out with an extra cooler that tried to control the temperatures in the transmission a lot better. So these are the door handles out of my 85 and out of my 92. They're both exactly the same, but when pushing on the knob on the handle, it wasn't opening the door. Sometimes when you push really, really hard with your thumb, you could get the door to open. All I can see is the linkage that uh, pushes down on this rod is actually adjustable here. Um, the 85 doesn't look like it's adjustable very easy, or it's just really dirty, but um, the 92 has a four millimeter Allen on the back and you can actually um, slide this little bolt in a, in a slot here and uh, get, uh, get the door to release earlier. So you don't have to take the whole thing apart, just stick a four millimeter Allen in there, slide it in the groove, uh, one way loosens it, one way tightens it, uh, trial and error works, um, and uh, you can uh, fix your door very easily. I think that makes up for any worn parts inside. So yeah, here we go. I'm pretty happy about this, getting all new parts for our 85 and not having to pay for any of it. That's strange. So we got a new brake booster, new master cylinder, uh, brakes all the way around, and a new uh, clutch and slave cylinder. Now I couldn't get these from any of my suppliers, but found it on eBay. And I'm actually surprised that it is a um, pre-filled unit. So. You can see the oil in the bottom of the reservoir there, and I'm surprised they ship it with oil in it because now it's uh, 
Um, shipping is more expensive that way, but our reservoir was broken. Um, the slave, or the master, wasn't working properly. So, um, f f thought it best to just buy the whole kit. And uh, so we're gonna install that uh, once the transmission's all bolted nice and tight. And uh, put some brakes and everything together. We don't mess around with brakes. Uh, best to just start over. So I'm glad he's going for that. Um, making some progress. Here we go. It's Wednesday. It's about 10. It's not Monday, but I lift this stupid thing in the no engine hoist. Dang it. And I'm inside my paint booth with <sighs> sort of this paint booth with engines and doors and GTO parts. I'm gonna throw my back out for sure. My hoist is 12 miles. So the transmission might, might not even end up that bad. Uh, the holes on the bottom here are slotted so I can move this bracket back and forth. And the holes are actually pretty close. You can see the bolts there. And uh, I gotta move it back a little bit and that's which way it can go. Um, the top ones don't match. This is the bracket for the top. And that's the bolt holes for the bottom. So right in between my original holes, so I'll probably just have to redrill new holes so I can use those same bolts up there. And if it doesn't line up 100%, I'm gonna make a new new bracket here because that's easier than drilling holes in the frame and lifting up the cab and dropping bolts in or whatever. I can do this one with the, when I cut the floor out, but the passenger side won't be easy. So um, I think you gotta move the exhaust a little bit because it hits right here, which is too bad. I gotta redo that. Um, I thought the transfer case was a lot lower because the axle is so low. I thought I had lots, but uh, apparently not. So, lots more work, here we go. So this is the mount um, that goes to the top half of the seat frame to hold the transmission mount in place. And there's my two bolts for the transmission. And you can see that bracket is slightly behind those two bolts. So, unfortunately, where my holes are in my bracket, the holes for the mount are slightly in front of my slotted holes. So this um, bracket here coming off the back right holds the linkages to put it in and out of four wheel drive. And um, what I wanna do is turn this around so that it will work, this mount will work now. Now the mounts are behind the slotted holes. I can bring it that much farther back. I'm going to cut this off and I'm going to weld it on the back here and I can shorten it a little bit to make up for that extra little bit of space here. Um, the reason uh, I don't have that shifter linkage though, looking around in my pile of goodies, and that's because the mount uh, where that bolted on broke off and he had somebody else weld it because it's cast so it's tricky welding because you got to heat the whole thing up. So because those three are all new, I hope he has the linkage to uh, move these levers in and out of the four wheel drive. For now, I'm gonna put that mount on anyway because I can bolt it up without drilling any holes and uh, support the tranny. I'm gonna keep going and I'll give him a call in the morning, see if he's got that shifter linkage. So yeah, here we go. So that worked really good. Um, I got the mounts in at the top there. I didn't drill the holes in the bottom uh, mount here yet because that's really easy to do anytime. 
So that plate is switched around. It's got that brace going to the front. It's very easy to drop this bottom mount back down again uh, if, I, if I can make that work. But it's amazing that the mounting holes for the subframe are in the same spot considering this uh, crew cab. But yeah, I guess, I guess it's sitting on the tranny and not on the transfer case. So the transfer case hangs out at the back. So I guess that makes sense. So yeah, we're gonna leave that for now until I uh, get that shifting when I get to figure that out. But uh, yeah, here we go. So follow a variety of projects that include conversions and repairs to anything from Ferraris to chainsaws. And check out the tape box, my newest invention that's coming to market. And remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich. <laughs>